Welcome to Module 2 of the Honeywell VFD training. This video will cover how VFDs work and the induction motors used with VFDs. After completing all the modules, you will know how to wire, install, keypad program, and commission a Honeywell VFD. If you have any questions or need assistance, please contact your local Honeywell sales representative or field device specialist. VFDs have three subsystems, a rectifier, the DC bus, and the inverter. Supply power is usually three phase, and the first component is the rectifier that converts the AC to DC. Next, the power goes to the capacitors and the DC bus. These smooth out ripples in the DC current. Lastly, transistors called IGBTs convert it back to AC, but in a way that allows us to choose a frequency. AC induction motors rotate at a speed that is proportional to the frequency of the electricity powering them. So when a VFD varies its frequency, it varies the speed of the motor. This allows us to drive the motor at different speeds. This is a picture of a three-phase alternating current, AC sine wave. You can see how each of the three phases are alternating positive and negative. And you can see how the phases are staggered so they are 120 degrees apart. The output from the VFD is shown here in red. You can see the square waveform roughly follows the sine wave that the motor usually runs on. The VFD actually sends out pulses of positive and negative electricity at one specific DC voltage. The duration of time that the VFD sends out each of these pulses corresponds to a certain AC voltage, longer pulses for a higher voltage, shorter pulses for a lower voltage. The frequency is determined by how many times per second the voltage switches from positive to negative. As the three phases of AC power enter the VFD, it is converted from AC to DC in a rectifier bridge. Diodes allow the flow of electricity in only one direction. There are usually three diodes on the positive side and three on the negative side. Alternating current is constantly switching from positive to negative. These diodes allow the positive wires to carry positive electricity and the negative wires to carry negative electricity. This way the diodes convert the AC into DC. But the DC is not perfect. It is still varying too much to be useful direct current. Rectifying the AC voltage results in higher voltage DC. If the main power is 480 volts AC, then the power coming out of the rectifier will be DC fluctuating between 580 and 680 volts. A rule of thumb is that the DC bus voltage is 1.35 times the input voltage. The DC with these ripples then passes to the DC bus portion where capacitors absorb the AC ripple and deliver much smoother DC power. One important thing to mention in regards to these capacitors is safety. The function of a capacitor is to store energy. This is necessary for the VFD, but it's also a source of danger. When power is disconnected from the VFD, the capacitors remain charged for at least five minutes. For safety's sake, after disconnecting power, wait until the display goes blank. Then wait five minutes to be sure the capacitors are fully discharged. Once we have a DC power source, the inverter chops it into a manufactured three-phase AC current for the motor. The inverter takes the DC power from the DC bus and uses insulated gate bipolar transistors, IGBTs, to switch the power on and off, sending out pulses of electricity. These pulses are of a certain duration of time, shorter or longer. The longer the pulse makes it appear to be of a higher voltage to the motor, the shorter the pulse, the lower the voltage. The inverter sends out pulses from the positive side of the bus, then the negative side of the bus. This simulates alternating current. As the VFD operates, it will change the voltage as it changes the frequency. This is called pulse width modulation, and along with the polarity changes, this allows the VFD to drive a motor with a certain voltage and frequency of power. There are three channels of power, so the output is three phases of simulated AC. AC induction motors rotate at a speed proportional to the frequency of the electricity. 
So when a VFD varies its frequency, it varies the speed of the motor. The motor can't tell the difference between a true AC sine wave and the pulses of pulse width modulation. This allows us to drive the motor at different speeds. So to summarize that, a VFD takes AC power and converts it to DC in the rectifier section. The DC bus smooths out the ripples, and the IGBTs pulse it to the motor in a simulated AC current. The VFD can be controlled by a sensor or a controller to drive at a certain frequency. This saves energy and conditions the space better. VFDs that are not filtered can create electrical noise back into the electric network of the building or even out onto the grid. This noise is called harmonic distortion and can overheat transformers, motors, and cause breakers to trip or microprocessors to lock up. Honeywell's smart VFD drives have filters to minimize harmonic distortion. When motors and transformers and many other devices draw in power, the current in the circuit is proportional to the voltage. If there is a change in the voltage, then the current flow changes proportionally. It's Ohm's law. We say that these devices have a linear load. Other devices have nonlinear loads. Nonlinear devices draw in power with abrupt pulses. These include fluorescent lights, microwave ovens, the switching power supplies on computers, printers, and TVs. These pulses distort the waveform of the power they are drawing in. And this causes distortion at harmonics to the base frequency that can lead to power problems with the electrical distribution system and the loads connected to them. AC and DC chokes are filters used to minimize these harmonics. If the filter is on the mains on the AC line powering the rectifier, it is called an AC choke. If it is filtering the DC power in the DC link, it's called a DC choke. Some manufacturers use an AC choke for harmonic distortion. These do minimize the harmonics going back to the panel but create a voltage drop of about 2 to 3%. They do, however, provide some degree of surge protection. Honeywell uses DC chokes, as they are a little more effective and do not cause voltage drops. In addition, the displacement power factor is a little better with DC chokes. Honeywell's smart VFD drives have DC chokes as a standard feature. Drives with a DC choke do not also need an AC choke. If you are working on a VFD that does not have a choke, AC chokes may be purchased from an electrical supply house and installed on the drive's load side. Single phase power uses two wires and is a sine wave of voltage alternating from positive to negative. With three phase, there are three signals and they are staggered 120 degrees apart. Three phase uses three wires and is used for higher power applications. Now let's look at three phase motors. Induction motors are very common and they're used for pumps and blowers. There are two important parts, the stator and the motor. The stator is the stationary part and the rotor is the part that rotates. Each leg of the three phase power is wired to the windings in the stator that are spaced 120 degrees apart from each other. When the motor is powered, the windings in the stator create electromagnetism. This magnetism is changing from positive to negative and creates a rotating magnetic field. If the motor responds to this magnetism, it begins to rotate. The speed it rotates at is dependent on the frequency of the power supplied to the motor. This way, we can use a VFD to change the speed of the motor. The chopped DC voltage from a VFD can bring about some undesirable effects on a standard AC induction motor. A VFD sends brief pulses of voltage that are higher than what the motor usually is exposed to. This can stress the motor winding insulation and cause it to break down. When the motor is run at speeds lower than 60 Hz, its temperature may rise as the shaft mounted fan is providing less cooling. Every motor has a nameplate, and on it you will find the NEMA insulation class. The most common classes of insulation are A, B, F, and H. 
The greater the insulation class, the greater the temperature the insulation can withstand without degradation. Class A is found on older motors and has the lowest tolerance to heat. Class B motors are commonly used for fans and pumps. Motors with Class A or B insulation may fail prematurely when paired with a VFD, especially if set up to run at lower speeds. Motors with insulations of Class F or H are well suited for applications with VFDs. These are called inverter duty motors. The best thing to do is to replace a non-inverter rated motor with an inverter duty motor when the VFD is installed. However, the owner may choose to upgrade with VFDs first and replace the motors with an inverter duty motor later when the motor fails. When a VFD is installed, it's best to upgrade the motor to an inverter duty motor. Inverter duty motors are made to operate with a VFD because they are resistant to voltage spikes, designed to withstand higher temperature, and contain special bearing graces. Adding a VFD to a non-inverter duty motor will reduce the motor life. The cables going to the motor should be kept as short as possible and not be run parallel with other cables. Follow the installation instructions provided with the drive, but it's generally best to keep the motor cables to less than 150 feet and separated from parallel power or control cables. When the motor is not turning, the rotor is grounded due to gravity. But when it turns, it's insulated and will build up a static charge as it rotates. Motors may use special grease to help with this, and proper grounding helps, as does keeping the motor cable short. But some systems remain susceptible to electrical discharge through the bearings, which can damage them. Grounding rings manage this by providing a path to ground to keep the electricity from arcing through the bearings. These can be purchased from an electrical supply house. The voltage pulses that travel from the drive to the motor can be reflected back to the VFD. When the cable is longer than about 20 feet, these reflected waves can create a high amplitude standing wave with damaging voltage spikes. An inverter rated motor is designed to withstand these voltages better than standard motors. There are applications that require the motor to be a long distance from the drive. For cable lengths greater than about 100 feet, a DVDT filter is recommended. It will dampen these voltage spikes to protect the motor. DVDT filters can be purchased from an electrical supply house. Motors are all provided with a motor nameplate. Critical data such as voltage, full load amps, motor horsepower, and the insulation class is displayed on the nameplate. You will need to enter the motor volts, horsepower, and full load amps into the keypad interface during the startup process. This concludes VFD operation and induction motors. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Honeywell sales representative or field device specialist.